So in today's class, we'll be going through a few input-output streams. That is how to take input and output using the Java classes. Moving on, input is the data of what we give to the program, right? You enter the input using your keyboard. You just the program asks you to enter a particular value or data. You just enter use your keyboard to enter it, and that is called input. That value is actually used in that program itself. Output is the data what we receive from the program in the form of result that is displayed on the console window in case of Java programs. What is stream? Stream represents flow of data that is sequence of data. Okay? So entire sequence of the data is actually considered to be a stream. Now to give input we use input stream and to give output we uh, use the output stream. Moving on. How input is read from keyboard? So this is a small di diagram to explain how the input is taken from the keyboard. This is a system dot in class. Okay, it represents keyboard. To read data from keyboard, it should be connected to input stream reader. Now, using the input stream reader, what happens? It reads data from keyboard and sends that data to the buffered reader. It reads data from the input stream reader and stores data in buffer. It got methods so that data could easily be accessed right so this is the diagram these are actually linked like this system dot in input stream reader and buffer reader whenever you create an object of buffer reader you write buffer reader within that you pass the input stream reader and within that you pass the system dot in okay nickel says in the last slide we had just under understood what is input that is what the user gives to the program, what is output that we receive on the console window, what is stream, stream is the flow of data and for taking input we use input stream and for receiving output we use output stream. So this is the first slide. I hope you are clear with it Nikhil and every one of you please write down on the chat window are you guys clear with it till now this diagram as well. You'll understand when we use buffered reader, what is this linking connected to or send data to shows? What it depicts? Okay. Okay, everyone says yes. That's good. Moving on. Reading input from console. Input can be given either from a file or keyboard. Input can be read from console in three ways. The first one would be the buffered reader. The second one is string to tokenizer. And third one is the scanner. Okay, so these are the three classes using which you can take the input from the console so we'll go through them each one each one of them one by one and first of all we'll understand what is a buffered reader how to use it so first of all you use the class that is buffered reader you create an object of that equals to new operator buffered reader within that as it is connected you write input stream reader okay you connect it to input stream reader and within that you pass system dot in that will be the keyboard whatever you press it comes to input stream reader like that okay now if you let's say you want to take an integer value so write int h equals to buffered reader dot read read is a method that is present with buffered reader using that you can take integer value from the user String name buffer reader dot read line. Read line will fetch a string from the user. Okay, so this is a method. Within that method, you can use these functions which are present with buffered reader. Okay, so let's go to Eclipse without wasting any time and we'll see the code for buffered reader. So, first of all, I come to input buffered reader code. So, this is the code right here that is buffered reader. Buffer reader, you create the object new buffered reader. Within that, you pass an input stream object, and in that, you pass system dot in as an attribute, right? So you have created an object of buffered reader using which you can take the input from the user. Now I print a statement that is enter your name first of all. Second is I create a string variable in that I'm storing buffer reader dot read line. That means whatever string that has been entered by the user is getting saved to this name variable. Similarly, I ask for the age and age has been saved like this that is integer dot percent buffered reader dot read line. Now can any one of you tell me why I'm using this right this? Why I'm writing integer dot percent? All of you please write down on the chat window why do you think I'm using integer dot percent? Nickel says type casting. Okay, so what is the necessity of type casting over here? 
Ashraf says convert string to integer exactly correct what is happening this preferred reader dot read line actually gives the output as the return type is a string value but you want to save it in integer so what you are doing you are passing that string value to integer value Mayang says to convert the string to integer Yogesh says string to int convert Ahmed says by default system takes everything in the form of string okay that's good what if it is not possible uh, I didn't get your question Nikhil I, I think you are trying to say that if it is not possible to pass a string into an integer, right? Okay, so for that what you can do? Let's define one more age. One variable that is int age1 equals to buffered reader dot read. So this is one more option for you. Read will give you an output as an integer type so it is quite easy to use I wanted to show you that you can also pass the string and save it in the age file age variable okay so I hope it is clear now now when I run this code enter your name so first of all I'll give my name that is Vineet now enter your age my age is 90 I'm Vineet 19 year, 90 years old okay I come back to my presentation once again and I come to string tokenizer that is the second class using which I can take the inputs it can be used to accept multiple inputs from console in a single line whereas buffer reader accepts only one input from a line okay so you can only pass one name if it is passed if you want to pass it so in one line you can pass only one name using the buffer reader but if you are using a string tokenizer you can pass many inputs but just by using a delimiter what will be a delimiter it could be a comma sign right so it uses a delimiter space or comma to make the input into tokens now you write buffer reader you create a buffer reader so that you can take the entire line as an input after that you define a tokenizer object and you pass the entire string that was taken by the buffer reader you pass comma now wherever it finds a comma it understands that this is the first token and after the comma there is a second token present right so that's where you can take multiple inputs so similarly name and age is being taken so I go to Eclipse and I open the program for the tokenizer itself So I have it here. Now buffer reader, you create the object, quite simple to understand. Enter your name and age separated by comma. So comma will be the delimiter and whenever this tokenizer finds a comma, it understands that the, before the comma it is one value, after the comma sign there is the second value. So once you create the object, you pass this string that you have saved using the buffer reader here and you pass the comma that will be a, acting as a delimiter. Now you create a string object name equals to tokenizer dot next token okay so it will save the name first one into the name again you declare a variable age because you know that this after the comma there will be age present so you write integer dot pass and tokenizer dot next token now why I'm passing it to integer right now it is because it will return me an object type okay so I have to convert it sorry this will be also a string type that I'll be passing it back and saving in the age variable when I run this code enter your name age separated by comma so right we need comma 24 and I press enter so I'm we need 24 years old okay I run this code once again I write we need this time I give my complete name with a space Chaturvedi comma 24 anything okay now tell me if I just enter it will I receive an exception or it is fine will it take the output and print the entire result or it will give me an exception all of you please write down on the chart window last time I only passed beneath Ashraf says it's fine. Nickel says no error. Mayang says it's right. Absolutely it is right. Now I run this code once again. Let's try one more thing. The same we need. 
Chaturvedi, comma, I give a space, now 24. Now will it give me an error? Please write down on the chart window, everyone. Nikhil says no, Mayank says no, Ashraf says no. What about the rest of you? Yogesh says no. Ahmed, what do you think? Mahvesh? Pranav says I don't think so. Okay then. So I'll just press enter and this time I receive an exception. Why? Exception because you are passing the delimiter as comma but in the console when uh, what you did after the comma you pass a space so it is not taking that space okay it does not take it like that hence it is giving an exception now if I put a space here I save the file I run this code once again this time again I pass we need comma space 24 now what happens this time will it give me an error everyone please write down on the chat window Mayang says no error Asraf says no error Okay, everyone says no error, exactly correct. This time it won't give me any error. Any error. One more try, okay? So that's, that is how your doubts will get cleared. What if now? Will it give me an error? It will be an exception. Why? Because in the delimiter you pass a space. Okay, so whenever it finds a space now, it is also thinking a delimiter, but the delimiter is still not complete. Right? So it gives you an exception. So these are a few properties that are present. Nikhil, you'll have to try it on yourself, putting the multiple delimiters. Absolutely, it is a string. I placed it. Now running part will be your duty. Okay? Consider it as an assignment and you'll get the answer. And theoretically, yes, you can use it. Okay? I hope it answers your query. Nikhil. Okay, so string tokenizer is done. Now we come to scanner. It accepts multiple inputs from file or keyboard and divides into tokens. It has methods to different types of input, integer, float, string, long, double, byte, where tokenizer does not have. Okay, so scanner is the best way by using which you can take the input from the user. It has got different methods for different kinds of data types, right? As well as, as you received exceptions in case of tokenizer, there, there are no such exceptions in case of scanner. Okay, you won't be receiving any exceptions. That is the runtime exceptions. Okay, because in the compile time, the road, uh, code looks good in case of tokenizer, but when you run it, you receive an error, but not in case of scanner. So I'll show you the code for scanner now. It is the best way if you have to take an input. So I come here quite simple first printing a string that is enter your name and age string name is equal to scanner dot next and age equal to scanner dot next end okay next will give you a will take a string value and next end will take an integer value now before that you have to define a scanner that is scanner scanner equals to new scanner you have to pass system dot end okay so that you're mentioning the input is being taken from the keyboard when I run this code, control F11, enter your name and age. So right, Vineet, enter 90. I am Vineet, 90 years old. Okay, so this way, this looks quite easy than the other ways of taking input from the user. All of you, what do you think? Is that clear to you? Please write down on the chat window. Sai says yes, simple. Mike says yes. Sai says and clear. Yogesh says yes. Nikhil Pranav says yes. Ashraf says yes, it's clear. And Kondarpa says yes. Ahmed says yes. Pratik says best way of input. Exactly correct, Pradeep. Pratik, sorry, not Pradeep. Moving on. Writing outputs to console. We are, now we have learned how to take inputs, how to write the output on console. And we have been using from the day one. That is system dot out dot print. What this is print? Is this correct? All of you, tell me. We haven't been using this print. We are using print ln always. System dot out dot print ln. What is the difference between them? That is system dot out dot print and print ln. So he says, yeah, prints on the same line. Ahmed says right. 
Mayank says yes. Ashraf says new line. Nikhil says it prints without new line. Pranav says prints. Print Alan prints next line. Pratik says print Alan means print and goes to the next line. Exactly Pratik, that's the exact definition. Print Alan means it first prints the statement and then goes to the next line. Okay? It is not so that the, it will first go to the next line and then print. Okay? Kundarpa says it gives a new line. Exactly. Now, you, using the right, you can pass the ASCII values, okay? When you pass this, so actually the ASCII value is being passed to the right. It takes the integer values. And I will be printed using right. So, let's see the demonstration as well. And it is present in output main, okay? So, system hello, print Alan. So what I'll do, I'll just change it to print. I'll just copy the entire sentence, control C and VV, three statements, okay? Ahmed says, I agree with Pratik. Sorry, Pratik says, sir, here two objects of system class out and print LN, please explain it. Uh, are you talking about print Allen and this right? Please write down on the chat window Pratik if yes. Okay, till that time I'll just show you. I run this code. I receive hello, hello, hello. Why is it so? And then A. Okay, because I'm not using print Allen. As soon as I use print Allen in the last one, what will happen? A will come in the next line. That is hello, 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 and finally A comes to the next line. Okay, Pratik says system dot out dot print ln out and print ln are objects now. Nah. No, print ln is a method in which you pass the input and that returns an output on the console window. Okay, print print ln. These are all different methods that takes some input and gives you output. Moving on. Now this is a small flow chart for you. Okay, you can go through it as as soon as I up, upload the presentation or whenever you receive the video, okay? So these, this is just the flow diagram input out of streams. It can be divided into byte-oriented streams and Unicode character, that is the character or byte. When you are dealing with byte, you can use input stream. In that, you've got classes like file input stream, data input stream, and for the output stream, you've got file output stream and data output stream. When you come to in case of characters, what happens, you've got reader and writer, input stream reader to read the data, output stream reader to print the characters on the output stream, that is console. Okay, so you can go through the diagram and search, understand it, okay.